such praise and joy is there in our mind. That it excels all other place. That earth of thoughts all grows by time. Greetings as the afternoon is ushering evening in. And this intellectual odyssey of ideas is coming towards a circulation. I just I am here to take to your next speaker who is dodged to the lighthouse. Our next guest has been an active social worker since his childhood. From starting out in 2015 in his school and city to taking it on global stages in 2023. We often believe that what difference will my voice make in global crisis? But it is our next speaker who made me realize that how important it is to raise our voice as these little voices come together and make a difference. His determination and commitment towards making this world a better place is commendable. Initiators of change. Initiators of change has been the fundamental in changing the face of the city since 2015. They have engaged themselves in many initiatives like adopting many government schools, youth aid conclaves, medical camps and many more. And today we are esteemed to have the man who spearheaded all these movements here among us. Mr. Gaurav Deep Singh, the chairperson and founder of Initiators of Change. His journey has served as a beacon of motivation for all of us present here. And we are eager to absorb the wisdom he graciously brings. So join me in welcoming Mr. Gaurav Deep Singh to the stage. Am I audible? Yes. Great, lovely. So good to be here today. Uh, I've always said that uh, in this society, struggle is not exclusive to anyone. We all go through struggles, we all have our stories. But today, uh, I'm going to talk about my story which you all can mostly relate to. How many of your young people over here? Call them today. Great, all of you are raising your hand. Great. All of us are young and all of us are energetic at this hour as well. So good to see all of you. Uh, three golden practices. Finding your true qualities, trusting your destiny and God's plan for you and unleashing your full potential, your maximum potential. Now when I say all these three practices, these may sound very basic practices and very cliche things that we all have heard for many years. But let me tell you something. Today we are going to discuss if executed rightly, how these three basic sounding qualities can change our life, can transform the life of a school failure, a college dropout and a financially struggling child to a social entrepreneur, a global change maker and the recipient of a national award by the President of India. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the first, finding your true qualities. While I was growing up, uh, I was always a very energetic child but always a very mischievous one as well always getting into trouble for the wrong sorts of things in my school. But I was always very energetic and talented too. Now what happens when you're talented, energetic, you're a good child, you end up scoring good. I scored very well in my 10th grade. I scored around 90% in my 10th grade. But at the same time, I, was, I had a group of 15 boys, which used to be known for the wrong things in the school. And I was quite kind of the leader of that pack. Enjoying my life, life was going very good. Then came 10th grade, I ended up scoring good as well. Now what happens when you score good in your 10th grade in India? You're asked to take sciences as a stream. And that's what happened to me as well. Without even thinking once, I went into science stream. I had went, but also the 15 guys who were with me, they all went together to science stream. Not even thinking once what we wanted to do in our life, we all went to science stream. One year down the line, all of us failed together. I was thrown out of my school. Now when I'm sharing this story, my father used to run a DAPA at that point of time. And we were going through financial struggles at our family and my mother was going through depression. She never used to come to the school. Now, you have failed the 11th grade. You're the son of the house. You're expected to take the family forward. And at the same time, you have failed. Your whole world comes shattering down. And my mother had to come to the school and beg in front of my principal that please do not throw our child away from the school. That day, I was very sad, genuinely very sad. Went back home and that day I met a, one of my mentors and he told me, Gaurav, who are you? I said, sir, I'm Gaurav Deep Singh. Why are you asking this today? I'm already very angry. 
Then, no, who are you? So then Gaurav Deep Singh, my father runs a Daba, this is my mother, this is what I school, this is where I study in. said, no, who are you? I said, so please tell me who I am. He said, you don't know it. Have you ever taken a piece of paper and written down something about your own self? That is when I realized, all our lives, we keep spending time in looking at, at looking at others. Oh, he's good in that, he's good in that, he's bad in that, he's bad in that. We keep judging each other, but we never look within our own selves. Who are we? Why are we here for? What is our purpose? That day changed my life. I took a step back, went back home, wrote on a piece of paper that I am good at oratory, I can write well, I can speak well. And suddenly I realized, none of these things go with non-medical. <laughs> and I changed my stream. I changed my stream from non-medical to mass media. Three months later, the guy who had scored 28% in 11th grade, failed in three subjects, physics, chemistry and maths, ended up scoring 96% in May exams. <laughs> what changed? Did the guy change? No. The only thing that changed was now I knew my true qualities. Now I knew what I wanted to do. And when you know what you want to do, you start loving yourself a little more. And when you start loving yourself, you are more focused. You are out of the mischievousness and all the wrong activities. You get more focused about your life when you are loving yourself. So now the life was going very good. Life was going very good. I was scoring well in 12th as well I scored. I was one of the district toppers in my 12th grade. Went into one of the biggest colleges of Punjab for my higher studies. One year later, and I built a good life. Now one year later, I got a call from my father, Gaurav. We are going through serious debt and we cannot afford your education. Please come back. The whole world that I had created again shattered in front of my eyes. Came back to Ludhiana, started studying in another college. And I was literally complaining. My destiny, my family, what is happening to me? Why is it happening to me? All the parents are supposed to give a good life to their, their kids. Why is it happening to me? But then I realized my parents were actually doing their best. But at that age, you don't really realize it, right? So, I was very angry on all the circumstances that were happening. That day, I got my second lesson. Again, met a mentor and he said, Gaurav, trust God's plan. This is, going to, this is going to be right for you. I said, how can this be right? I was Mr. Freshers and my Freshers. How can this be right? He said, no, this is going to be right. And at that age, you don't really believe in it. But I just went along with it. Now, I had a lot of energy, but I had come back to my city. I had two options. One, to keep complaining. Two, to create something out of my misery. I realized many youngsters at that point of time, along with me, were going through similar financial struggles. So I decided, then let's do something together. Let's start creating something. Because when you lose money, when you have debt in your family, you do not only lose money, you lose respect first. People are coming at your place asking for the money back and you can't give it. So you lose respect first. I thought of myself. I was working at an NGO for it as a typist for 2000 rupees a month. I asked myself, can I clear the debt of 50 lakh rupees by earning 2000 rupees a month? No. At the age of 18, can I clear the family debt? No, I can't. So let's play an Uno reverse. Let's earn respect first. So I formed this organization called Initiators of Change with four friends from my house is told this. Uh, I created my bedroom and uh, took an old PC table and created my office and these were my four founders, my elder sister and two of my best friends at that time. We created this organization called Initiators of Change. Now why this name Initiators of Change? I was always very annoyed with the society who says youth is the future. Beta, you are the future of the country. Beta, youth hi bhavishya hai. At the same time, when a youngster has an idea, Sir, I want to do this. Beta, you are too young. <laughs> Beta, abhi ab sirf suno. Beta, this is not your age to give ideas and take decisions. How ironical is it, it is in our society where we call Bhagat Singh our youth icon and do not appreciate the power of youth. How surprising it is. We keep saying that youth is the future, but we do not give them the space to do something on their own. So I was annoyed with it. And I always knew that youth is the trend setter. You see on Instagram, you see on Facebook, we set the trends. So why not set good trends? Let's create an organization where we are the leaders, where we are the initiators of new trends. So we call this organization Initiators of Change. I was doing good. Organization
organization was doing good. Within a year, we were all over the news. We were working with the deputy commissioners, school principals. I was taking seminars. Things were going quite good. And the same people who used to call my mother for the money now started calling my mother and asking, please, your son knows the deputy commissioner. Can you do this? Can you ask for the recommendation? Your son knows this principal. Can you help us with the recognition? So respect started coming back. But how does money come? How does the money come back? Now this was a question. This is where the second lesson came into life. One day I got a call from a college and they said, Gaurav, can you come to our college and share your story? We find it very interesting. I said, okay, I'll come. I went to that college, shared my story of this school failure, college dropout. And at the end of the seminar, they gave me 10,000 rupees. I was working for 2,000 rupees a month. And I got 10,000 for speaking for one hour. I was surprised. This is when I realized, if I had not failed, would I have a story? <laughs> no. If I had not come back from Chandigarh to study in Ludhiana, would I have a story? No. And if I had not had a story, would I be getting this 10,000 rupees? No. So we need to trust the God's plan. The second lesson came into life and it changed my life. I started earning within two years. I got so many opportunities by the government of India. I was working as the voter awareness ambassador for election commission of India. I was taking seminar. I was traveling all over the country. And within two to three years, I was able to clear out my family's debt of eight years. <laughs> life was going good. Life was definitely going good. Again, built a very good life for myself. I was very happy. That is where the third lesson, unleashing your true potential, came into my life. 2018, January, I got a call from the Ministry of Youth Affairs. Gaurav, we have decided to give you the National Youth Award by the President of India. I said, wow, crazy. I had never thought of this. Great. And at the same time, I was now a journalist working at a TV channel part-time. That's when I realized, if I'm doing something so good that the government of India is honoring me for it, why not do it full-time? I left my job and I started working full time for initiators of change. Because at that day I had also, just, just after the day I got my National Youth Award, I read a quote by Nelson Mandela, which is a beautiful quote and it drives my life today. And that quote was, there is no passion to be found in living a life less than what you are capable of living. And I asked myself, am I just capable of earning for myself? Am I just capable of delivering seminars? No. I'm not just capable of that. I'm capable of giving a better life to so many more youngsters because I had seen the struggle. So we started building more. We started organizing more events. We started doing more campaigns for the underprivileged kids and the organization that had started from four children from a storeroom became an organization of over 2,000 volunteers all over the country. And we were working in eight cities. We were not only working, we were organizing seminars, conferences, conclaves, and now, we were also transforming schools like this, classrooms and halls like this, to smart classrooms and libraries like this all over Punjab. We were adopting government schools. We started adopting government schools. We started working on their lives. And within last, in the last four years, we have impacted more than 5,000 underprivileged kids of Punjab. Today we run a free evening school. We work on all of this. And recently I realized so much of a potential this age group has. 16 to 22 years of age group that works at Initiators of Change, I realized that this can not only organize seminars and uh, work for schools and raise funds, but can also serve in disasters. Our team started working in Punjab towards 2023. And this whole team affect, impacted and helped more than 30,000 people in Punjab in two months. 16 to 22 years of age. These youngsters. From all of this story, these three lessons, finding your true self, believing in the power of God, and unlocking your true potential, define my life. But more than that, I got two more very important lessons that I would like to share with you. <coughs> There's a quote in Punjabi that says, Burai di jit lai, sirf ikko cheez zaruri hai, ke changge log chop kar jaan. The only thing required for the evil to win is the silence of good. Ask yourself, let us ask ourselves. <coughs> Are we, which side are we on? If we are good people and we are silent, we are not really good people. We are helping the evil win. So we need to speak up. And this is what we need to become because, and this may sound very philosophical right now, 
this may sound very philosophical and think you okay god is saying this but is it actually uh, possible for a youngster for a 16 17 year old youngster a single youngster to transform the world and inspire the world yes it is let's imagine the world is full of darkness today and let's imagine this room is the whole world it's full of darkness and i turn on this small torch what will be more prominent darkness or this small torch the torch it shows that darkness no matter how intense it is will always be overpowered by light and the light always remains more prominent now let us ask ourselves question whether we are going to keep telling the youngsters beta you are too young or we are going to create lights out of them and start from the world thank you so much for listening